What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, I wanna to show you something mind blowing, which is the open web UI. This is an open source application that you can run locally on your system and it allows you to use all the different large language models, including OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, but also local models using Olama. This is probably the most cost effective and most convenient way to use all the large language models without the need for a subscription. So let us get right into it. All right, now before we get started with the actual installation and setup, I wanna spend a couple of minutes showing you what this is going to look like. So what the end result is going to be, so you know if you wanna watch the video or not. This is Open Web UI running on my system locally. You can see it's running on localhost, port 8080, and it looks pretty much like ChatGPT's interface. So I have some text box here, I have a code interpreter, I can select a model, but you can see that here I have Anthropic models, I have Google models, I have GPT models and O1 models and O3 models, and I even have DeepSeq locally through Olama. You can see here DeepSeq R1, seven billion parameters. I also have a Gwen model here, 2.5 with 1.5 billion parameters. These are the two Olama models that I'm running on my system locally. Uh, the other models are used via the API. So I'm using the Anthropic, Gemini and um, OpenAI API using the keys. So for some of the requests, I'm actually spending money, but none of this requires a subscription. I don't have to pay monthly 20 bucks to use that. I can just um, pay by usage. And this probably, unless you're using it all the time, is going to be cheaper overall. So what I can do here is I can start a simple conversation like what is Python? And then it tells me Python is a high level interpreted programming language, then I can switch the model, for example, to Gwen, and I can say provide some example code. And hopefully it's going to recognize I'm talking about Python still, there you go, it provides some Python code that I can look at. Um, with the proper syntax highlighting, I can also go ahead, for example, and run this now I can click on run. This is going to run the Python code here in the browser. So the features are quite advanced. Also, if I, for example, say, uh, now provide simple HTML code, as an example, there is a rendering feature similar to that of Claude, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, that. Yeah, actually, it looks kind of fine. So you can see here, hello world, this is a simple paragraph, uh, I get the user interface that was designed here by the model. Uh, as a preview, and we have a bunch of other features that we can use here. But all of this again, works without subscription, I can add all the different models, if I want to customize it even further, I can add literally everything because I can code my own endpoints here. This is a super comprehensive tool. And this is what we're going to learn about in this video today. Now let us get started from scratch and install open web UI onto our system. For this, we're going to take a look at their GitHub repository. And when we scroll down to the installation section, we're going to see that installing and using open web UI is extremely simple. All we need to do is we need to use pip to install a package. So pip or pip three install open web UI and then just open web UI serve and the application is running on your system on localhost. Now, the only thing to consider here is that we need to use Python 3.11 or higher, we cannot use Python 3.10, 9, 8, and so on, we have to use a newer version due to compatibility. Um, and if you are like me, and you're using an older version by default. So right now, if I do Python three, you can see I'm using Python 3.10. What you can do is you can use something like PyEnv to easily switch versions. So I can just say PyEnv global 3.12. And now if I say Python three, I'm using Python 3.12. So I don't have any issues here. And I can switch back when I'm done working with uh, open web UI. Now, alternatively, you can also use a Docker container, I don't want to use this in this video today, uh, in order to not alienate people that are unfamiliar with Docker. So I'm going to use the simple straightforward approach of installing a package and calling surf. That's uh, the simplest way. But the Docker way is also very, very easy to set up. So if you're familiar with Docker, you might want to go with this one, uh, I'm going to use the basic approach here. So let's close this, let's do pip three install open dash web UI. In my case, this is already installed. So it's going to only tell me that I have everything that I need. And then what I can do is I can say open dash web UI surf. And this is going to run the server, this is going to um, to host this on localhost. And then all I need to do is I need to click on this link, this is going to open 
a tab in my browser, which I'm going to get onto my main screen. Now let's get rid of the console here. And now you can see I have everything up and running. Now by default, you're not going to have any models. So you're not going to see all the models that I have here. And this is because you didn't connect to them, you need to specify API keys, you need to specify the endpoints. And this is what we're going to take a look at how to do now. Now, First of all, what you're going to see when you open this uh, web UI is you're going to see a login screen or a sign up screen, you need to create an account and you're going to use that account to log in. But keep in mind, this account is local on your system. You're not creating an account anywhere on openwebui.com or something like this, you're creating this account on localhost on your own system. And this account is in no way connected to the internet. So this is just for you locally. And if you're hosting this on a server, you can have multiple users. That is the purpose behind this account, you don't need this for any authentication with an API. So create an account log in, and then what you want to do is you want to go to your account down here, you want to go to settings. And then you want to go to connections. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a simple open AI connection. And we do that by adding a new connection by default, you're not going to have any connections. And what you want to do here is you want to specify the base URL. In the case of open AI, that is api.openai.com slash v one. So this is what it looks like API openai.com slash v one because this means that it's going to use the slash v one slash models endpoint to get all the model names. So this is going to retrieve all the model names. You also want to specify an API key. Um, for this, I have here a separate browser tab, I have the anthropic console. Uh, let me just make this uh, full screen here. I have the anthropic console, what you want to do here is you want to go to API keys and create API keys and open AI, you want to do the same thing, create new secret key. And in Gemini, uh, Google AI studio, you want to do the same thing, create an API key, get it. So quite straightforward, quite simple. And what we do with these API keys is for OpenAI, we provide it here for the other ones, we're going to talk about that in a second, you provide the API key here, you save and what you can optionally do is you can provide model IDs. If you don't want to have all the models, you can specify I'm only interested in GPT 40, for example, this is going to only allow you to use GPT 40. It's not going to list all the different models, this can be quite useful. So I have the exact same setup here, I'm going to close this. And you can see I have all the different GPT models or one models and so on. And if I for example, go into my settings now and to the connection and I edit the connection and I say, for example, I want to use GPT 40 only here, I press this plus button, I press save, and then I press save here again, what's going to happen is that I'm no longer going to be able to use all the different models, I can see here the Google models, the anthropic models, but only GPT 40. When it comes to the open AI models, I can see also my local models here. But you can see that my selection here was limited. So I can go back, I can go to settings, I can remove that, save that. And then I'm going to get all the models again, available here. What I can also do is I can go to the settings and I can go to admin settings, and then to connections. And or actually models, sorry, not connections. And here I can also individually disable specific models, if I want to, this is also a way to do that. But with open AI, it's in general, quite straightforward, you just provide the URL, you select the models, and you're ready to go. With Olama, it's also quite simple. Now I'm not going to do an Olama tutorial in this video today. If you don't know what Olama is and how to use it and how to set it up, I have a video on this channel, you can watch it if you want to. But if you have Olama running on your system, all you need to do is you need to create a connection, you need to say localhost and the respective port number, and you're ready to go, you can just go and use Olama. So these two things are very straightforward, very easy to integrate into open web UI, they work straight out of the box without any fancy configuration. Now for anthropic models and for Google models, we need so called functions. Now functions are a little bit like add ons or plugins, you could say. So you can again, go here to the settings, and you can go again to admin settings, and then to functions, you can see I have two functions here. And I can pull up the pages, you will find them in the description down below. Both of these uh, functions are by a guy called Justin Rob, I guess. Um, he wrote these two functions, one of them allows you to use anthropic one of them allows you to use Google Gen AI, the basic idea is what you have to do, let me just briefly uninstall them to show you how to install them. 
So let's go and delete this, for example, what you have to do is you have to go to the respective page, you have to create an account, this account you create here now is an actual online account. So this is not the same as your local account. If you want to use these uh, functions and add ons, you have to do it actually with an account. So you click on get and you provide a URL in my case, HTTP localhost 8080, just the port of your uh, web UI instance locally import to web UI. Uh, in this case, now it asks me again for my account. So I'm going to provide it. Uh, I think I need to now press one more time. So I click here again, import to web UI. And now it asks me if I want to add this to my uh, installation. So I have to look through the code, I always recommend when you install any functions or plugins, look at the code because this is running on your system, it can be malicious code. So make sure you're running a uh, code that you read through that you agree with, so to say that you think is secure. And in this case, I accept it, I confirm. And now all I need to do is I need to enable it, I need to go to valves, and I need to say Google API key. Uh, I provide my Google API key here. Now I'm not gonna have it anymore because I reinstalled the function. But once you provide your API key here, immediately, you're going to be able to use the respective endpoints. So right now, probably I can no longer use the Google models. Because my API key is not provided. But the same thing goes for Anthropic, you provide the API key, all of a sudden, you're going to see all the models same for Gemini, and you can use them here in your interface. And that is basically the setup. This is how simple it is. You just have Olama running, you have your open AI API key, your Anthropic API key, your Gemini API key, you connect them, and you can use them right away. So here I can go to Claude Sonnet, for example, I can say, write a simple tic tac toe game in Pygame, And then it gives me the code, I can run it again, all of this easily integrated. And I have a bunch of controls here that I don't have with most um, online platforms or online applications. I also have a lot of features that I did not explore yet myself. So first of all, let's see if this works. Not sure if this is going to execute here now on my system. No, okay, probably I need to copy paste this and actually run this because it requires Pygame. Or is it because my installation doesn't have Pygame? Maybe that's the reason let's install Pygame and see if this resolves the issue. Let's close this, let's run this again. No, okay, this doesn't seem to be it. Uh, but maybe I'm just dumb, maybe I'm just uh, missing something. Whatever, you can go to the uh, to the settings, you can go again to the admin settings. And you can see we have code execution, we have documents, we have web search, we also have stuff like image generation, which is experimental, you can enable it. And this tool can also try to do that for you. But if what you're doing with these APIs, if what you're doing with these large language models is primarily coding and asking questions and troubleshooting, I think that this is the cheapest way and the most effective way because you have all the models in one place. And some of the models are even free. Google's most powerful models are literally free right now. So 2.5 Pro, for example, is completely free, you can just use it. And to me, this is absolutely mind blowing, we can also provide here uh, files and also audio input and all that. So this is really an open source all in one tool. And I think you can calculate it for yourself, you can look at the pricing tables for the various APIs. Again, Google is free after all. Um, and you can see how much money you would save with your average usage if you don't have a subscription, if you're, if you're just using this locally, then of course, you can also set this up on a server, you can connect with your phone, you can connect with any machine if you're running this on a server. I think this is really a mind blowing tool. And I seriously consider if I play around with it a little longer, and I like it, I seriously consider to cancel all my subscriptions and just use this locally. I think it's going to be much cheaper and much more customizable. So that's it for this little video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're already using open web UI, if you think that this is a superior option compared to the proprietary, we could say software or interfaces that we're using in the browser. Let me know if you think this is a better option. Also, there's so much I didn't cover in this video, there's so much I myself did not yet look into maybe I'm going to do a follow up video on this one, because there's um, 
pipelines and many customization options here that I didn't cover because I didn't look into them. But overall, this tool seems super interesting to me. Again, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this. Besides that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.